Hi everyone, I'm Frank Malikud. I'm a news anchor with Fox's KTVU Fox 2 here in the San Francisco Bay Area. My guest is a leadership coach in San Francisco. She works with executives, sales teams, and individuals to reach their full potential. And as you might imagine, has been uh, fairly busy in our new COVID-19 world. Let's say hi to Kathy Early. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Frank. Great to be with you. Good to, good to have you as well. Tell us, uh, well, what's it been like with your business the last two and a half months? Well, it's been fascinating to see almost the world stop. I had been traveling and working with people in different parts of the world and suddenly I'm working with everybody virtually and people trying to adapt to a virtual life uh, has been fascinating to see, um, especially some of the people that I coach that are really looking for help me deal with the situation, getting comfortable in this, this virtual room that we're in now where you're used to sitting, you know, face to face with somebody. Well, especially as a coach and a mentor, working with someone where you want to, you know, build their skill set. Um, how has that been? And how much of, how much of what you do, because you do travel quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, was most of it face-to-face -face, or was a lot of it virtual even five months ago? Um, no, I would say, I would say a majority of my work was face-to-face, -face, whether I was traveling yeah. to be with people in between, we might, I mean, I work with some people at all different parts of the world, so we would be meeting weekly, virtually. But, I mean, we've, before this, we, um, I always turn my camera on because I, I do more coaching, and so it builds rapport. But many of my clients never turn the camera on, and suddenly everything is, we're, fa we're face to face now because we know we're not going to be physically in the same proximity. Well, it's kind of a, a double-edged sword. How are you dealing with it? And, and more importantly, I guess, how about your clients? Are they, or do they feel like they're still getting what they need, or is it kind of a growing process? Um, I think it's both. Um, I, I have had people I've coached that have lived in other parts of the world, so we've always done virtual. But for the ones I was working with face-to-face, -face, I think it's been a slow realization that we're going to be working virtually for quite a while. Um, in some ways, it actually, they've invited me in even more because I'm observing more meetings and I, I, I don't know exactly why, but I, I think it's an awareness that, oh my gosh, I have to operate totally differently now in a virtual, in a virtual life. What, what is it about, um, you know, we've, we've never met. Here we are meeting. Yeah, school. yeah. What is it about face-to-face uh, -face when you're with someone in a room, especially doing what you're doing, uh, coaching them to uh, be better at what they do? Well, we're, we're, we're in 2D right now, and when we're face-to-face, -face, it's three-dimensional. So the ability to naturally resonate with people, that we can do over this forum. It, it does work. Uh, but it, this requires being a lot more present, being in the camera. A lot of times people have been used to being in a virtual room with people and also doing three other things. Like, oh, I'm gonna look at my email and I'm probably gonna work on a document. And so there has become a, this shift, which I think people do, some of the fatigue, like, oh, I have to be fully present in this meeting. Right. And that is, I think, a difference because it's very obvious when someone, if I were doing something else, it would be very obvious. <laughs> yeah, you can't just uh, kind of schluff it. Um, I, is it becoming more effective or is there any pluses to it or would you much rather prefer to be face to face with somebody? Well, I think in terms of being a coach, if someone is ready and wants to work on something, anything works. Um, you know, last end of last year I was working with somebody in San Jose and the odds of she and I trying to meet face to face with traffic was so hard. We often met via video. Um, and she really wanted to work on it. And I think sometimes there's a little bit more, the barrier sometimes invites a little bit more openness. I've now been welcomed into people's homes, which right. is a fascinating thing. And, you know, part of my job is to pay attention. So I like, tell me about that picture and I get to see them in a more a different environment they're not always in their kind of work they're not in their work mode all the time because they're like they've just come from teaching their second grader math and now they're talking to me about 
running this strategy around some part of the business they run. So I think it makes a little bit more, the barrier is broken. There's the full humanity is showing up a lot more okay, with hey, everybody. It, it kind of humanizes you. I know all of us reporters at KTVU, you know, yeah, yeah, right. right now. And a lot of people are going, what book is that? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, yeah. such and such. And <laughs> I've been known to do the same watching some of our competitors. I go, wow, what college did he go to? <laughs> Snap a picture and I go, Colorado. You know? <laughs> We're all kind of snooping a little bit. Aren't we? Yeah, 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 yeah. But it makes us real. I, I know it on does. TV, a lot of these a lot of these traders have like Grateful Dead posters. Yeah, yeah. You're, and, you know, you're, right. you're thinking this right. this guy with a suit, he's a little uptight, he's a stock trader and, you know, yeah. big dead fan. So it, 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 I think it just makes us real a little bit. Yeah, and I mean, some of the things I work with people on are around how do you bring your full self to your work and you may be really serious and trying to push people to get things done and they need to see the full person and know that you're real and you have struggles. So this somebody, I just saw them with their dog last week. I'm like, okay, okay. Let, how do you let more of that realness, authenticity, vulnerability show up? So it's, exactly. it's, it's almost like the circumstances are colliding to match what they need to be working on. Well, tell us how have the concerns of your clients kind of changed over the last couple of months in light of the coronavirus? Have they? Yeah. For, I mean, we, we talk about it. It's a, it's a subject that we talk about because they're also trying to lead people through this moment in time. So even the substance of how do I prepare this communication that I'm going to send to everybody? What should I be letting people know about my own concerns? Uh, so it's actually the, the substance of what we're actually talking about in terms of how they're communicating, how they're engaging, not all of it, but a lot of it, a lot of the people I work with lead global teams. Um, so one of the realizations has become, there have always been people that have been working virtually. If they're in Asia or they're in Europe and our home office is in San Francisco, so there's a greater commonality. So we've been, I, you know, some people I've been able to leverage, how do you create more commonality with everybody now that everyone is in the same boat? This is the right. one time in my lifetime, I can say we were all experiencing something similar. And there's some, you know, that's a, it also, this is a great perspective setting time. What really matters when people are also homeschooling and running, you know, they have huge jobs and perhaps worrying about family members' well being and not being able to be uh, physically close. So that, that has also been, been much more of the topic of what we talk about. Yeah, along those same lines, as uh, as we all become multitasker, especially um, you know, as an executive with a, a big company that you know is forced to work from home. Yeah, uh, his wife maybe she was a teacher and she's home. He might have two or three kids that are homeschooling on computers. The whole house turns into this, you know, this quasi uh, business forum. Um, yeah, have you had to kind of coach some of those and kind of how to deal with your emotions and stay focused and and move forward in the last uh, couple of months? Yeah, um, a lot of what I work on, when whether there's the coronavirus or not, is how do you become more emotionally attuned? How do you convey your emotions to other people? How do you manage your emotion? How do you manage stress? That's a big topic. Um, so now it's, it's, I think it's much more heightened. Um, and making yourselves relatable as a leader is, is often a challenge because people don't always relate to you in the same way once you become the VP or the SVP or the right. CEO. And, and so being deliberate about what are you saying out loud to people? You might be saying, gosh, I, I feel lonely in my house. Well, how are, you, how are you expressing that to other people in a way that they feel like, oh, okay, I'm not alone. So this idea of like, you're not alone because we're all in our we're all in our own spaces <laughs> um and what are you doing I, I think the other thing is what are you doing to take care of yourself so that you are not because you have nothing else to do you're not going to go out to dinner or you know if, if you're sitting at your desk all day and not taking breaks and not eating and not moving you know then how are we how are we going to work on that yeah, I thought working at home would be easy. Uh, you know, you go into work and you, you know, someone comes by and says, hey, Frank, did you watch that show last night? And my, my desk is kind of set up 
near a pantry or a lot of people. Yeah, will, yeah. Hey, Frank, this, you know, and, you know, for 20 minutes of work, you turn around and talk for 10 minutes. And when you're at home, you're just jamming. I'm sending yeah. emails at eight o'clock, setting up interviews. We talked late yesterday afternoon. Yeah. I, in some regards, you, you, you end up working more yeah. at home and you forget about time. And I've forgotten lunch a number of times where it's 2.33 right. and I'm like, oh yeah, I got to eat. You right, know? right, 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 so right. We, we do need to kind of smell the roses a little bit, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And find a rhythm. And, and also to not, you know, not, you know, there's a lot of, you know, what you should do, like have a routine and, and, you know, find a routine and not be hard on your, if you have a day where you're like, oh, I was totally unproductive. That's fine. It's a p pandemic. We're, we're doing our best. Right. We're all figuring it out. You know, we're coming to grips with whatever is so uncertain is hard. And take, so. I didn't mean to interrupt, but how about yeah, yeah. a vacation? Now, a lot of people are saving yeah. at, at my, where I work. And our bosses are saying, hey, take some time off. Take a breath. Yeah. Even if it's just a, a day to take a hike and uh, kind of, right. kind of, I don't know, rekindle your soul, so to speak, because this can be a little stressful. Uh, uh, is that good advice for executives and sales teams and that kind of thing? Hey, it's all right. Even if you don't go anywhere, yes. it's best to just concentrate on you. Yes, absolutely. I mean, people are working more intensely because they're, trying to convert all of their strategy of whatever they're trying to do to, to work virtually for a longer period of time. I mean, my advice is always, what are the breaks you're building into every day? <laughs> what is the five minutes you take to look out at the window? I mean, we happen to live in a place that actually has some natural beauty around and how are you taking the time to just notice? But it, you know, take a longer break. If some people are being asked to take vacation. If you're being asked to do that right now, make it a day off, uh, make it a day where it's not, that's maybe a day of doing your laundry or <laughs> cleaning is what you really want to do, but actually give yourself a chance to calm your nervous system. Um, because when we're on all the time, we can go into fight or flight and then everything seems urgent. Everything's critical. You know, it, it heightens our stress and it's really hard to then downregulate from there. What advice would you give to those folks that uh, are worried about their job? Maybe they're furloughed. Maybe they took a pay cut. Uh, maybe they were laid off. Um, have you had to counsel some of these types of things? Uh, yeah, I, I, both friends and um, some people that I work with. Uh, that, that's a whole other level of uncertainty and finding, like, for any of us, where is the security we can find? Uh, I think that especially connecting to who is your support system and reaching out and not being afraid to say, Hey, I need to talk or, uh, because we can't do some of the things we might normally do when you might be feeling a little bit jolted or a lot jolted by what's happened. So reaching out to your support system and ask, you know, finding the resources, putting out there, Hey, is anyone else dealing with this in your, in your community? Um, because no one knows exactly what's going to, if, if someone's been furloughed, you don't know what, how long that might be. And Yeah. Um, I think a lot of folks, especially in high power positions are afraid to ask for help. Yes. Yes. And it's okay. Right. Yes. And even like for your, for your mental or emotional well being, reaching out for help in that way. If, if you work in an organization, there's often support for that. Um, how about patience and kindness? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> um, I think people are getting a, a kind of a big dose of that. We're very yes. busy because we yeah. don't know where we're going. And, and I think people, uh, you know, people are kind of getting back to the roots. And uh, yes, that's right. I mean, good manners. And uh, that's yeah, yeah. And the nice. gratitude for the people that are really my both my parents were teachers. So um, neither are living but they are like, I, I'm so happy that the appreciation for teachers is at the forefront and, and nurses and doctors and healthcare workers. And, uh, you know, people are taking the time to pause and say thank you every day, which is pretty amazing. What's been the toughest thing for you as a coach and a person to go through the last couple of months? Uh, I think one of the things for me personally, my family is in New York. So I had, oh. was planning to visit them in April. And I obviously have not done that. Uh, and for me, I, I mean, what, everything that I 
work with people on, I have to, I have to be doing the same things for myself. I have to be taking care of my own well being and making sure I'm moving and taking a break and not making everything, you know, the most urgent thing. And so I think not being able to physically reconnect with some of my, my people, <laughs> my, my friends has been hard, but we found other ways to do that, which I'm really glad about. And I've reconnected with some older friends, like people I would, haven't seen in 20 years, 30 years. And there's one group we get together now every week virtually. Oh, good. So it's been hard. I, you know, I, I find not being able to physically reconnect a bit of a challenge and finding my own rhythm in every day. Um, my, some of the stuff I'm working on, but I'm appreciating there's, a, I mean, I feel I'm, I'm healthy. I'm, I'm able to support myself my family is and friends are healthy. So. Um, talk about that rhythm too. We spoke about it last night. Yeah. Yeah. Catching up. But, um, uh, a lot of people have trouble doing that because every day is a little bit different. Um, yeah. turn on the news, you know, Oh my goodness, this might last another six months, another year. Who knows? Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Vital towards having a productive day. Right. That's right. Um, uh, I think, you know, one of the things I found myself personally, when this became, you know, oh, okay. I had too high of an expectation of what my day was going to be and I was going to meditate and then I was going to do yoga and then later I was going to do, you know, some cardio and I'm, and I'm doing my work in between that. So just make it simple and having the consistent, you know, some, the same thing you do first thing in the morning. I not having it be looking at your phone is a thing I think is good, whether there's a pandemic or not. Uh, and set, you know, how do you want to set yourself? I think that can really, start your whole day in a different way with some just breathe for a few minutes you can do it even before you get up and that always helps me because then i know exactly what i need to do right um and not get in this i find I, sometimes i get in the like oh i have so much to do like i want to get all this stuff done now that i'm at home well you know and, my half and she is yeah <laughs> you know, yoga pants on and ready to rock and roll immediately. <laughs> okay we're doing a class <laughs> And I just, uh, but you know what, <laughs> after a half an hour of that, it, yeah, just, yeah. it, it just supercharges you. Gets yeah. you going, and uh, that's important to, uh, you know, get your foot out the door in a, in the, with the right attitude, I guess. Even if you like can only walk down the block and back or down the stairs and back, when, you, you, when you're walking, you're using both sides of your brain. So it replenishes you really quickly. So if you just walk around your living room, if that's all you can do move your body like every 90 your brain can only concentrate for 90 minutes and then it loses focus so if you need to do really important things build in breaks that way and that's a, that's a rhythm that definitely works for me take a break uh, you know i live up a hill so if, if i even if i walk down to the end of the street back up i get my heart up a bit don't make it too complicated right and be and if, if you have a day where you're like oh i didn't do what i wanted it's all right yeah. The next maybe, day isn't predetermined. You're going to, you know. <laughs> maybe steps, choose. no steps at all, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, you do a lot with leadership. Um, uh, probably deal with executives. How they react to this trickles yeah, down to their absolutely. employees. What advice are you giving them to uh, deal with the unknown, I guess? Well, one is to be available and be present and be communicating more than even you think is necessary. Everyone is now in their own you know, corners of, of the world. And so the more they hear from you, the more they know, you know, one of my clients, they're now making more videos of here I am in my own home environment and making it less polished and more real and more frequent, I think has been um, really effective. Uh, making the time don't you don't have to have a big agenda just if you can bring people together sometimes and say what's on your mind what do you want to talk about um, anticipating needs um, client some of my clients do a good job of checking in with their employee base every three to four months around what's on their mind and then being responsive to it um, and not trying to be perfect not trying to be like the person that has it all together who has it all together right now <laughs> Nobody. Yeah. So at uh, Channel Two, our, our news director started a brown bag Zoom lunch, twelve thirty to one thirty uh, on Wednesdays, just as a way take a little break. Even if you check in for five minutes, 
Uh, sometimes there's 20, sometimes there's three or four in there, but we haven't seen each other in a couple of months because yeah. 95% of the employees are out of there. And I've been in a couple of times and it's really been, uh, it's been really nice because you yeah, can yeah. Hey, how you doing, whatever. Right. And uh, I think that's probably a good way for an employer or at least a boss to, you know, kind of check in a little bit and let right. them know that, hey, I'm going through this too. And I hope you guys are all right. Yeah. And I mean, nobody can say they don't have the time now for a 15 minute phone call. So who, you know, when, when you're feeling disconnected, you know, who's one person you want to reconnect with every week? Yeah. Uh, you know, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't, you don't have to create a lot of expectation for yourself to just remember your, you know, remember your connections and activate them. Like once they're activated, it's like such a uplift for the spirit. Oh yeah. Yeah. I try to make a phone call or drop an email or send a note to a, an old friend or an old soul that you haven't talked to in a while. And it, yeah. It works, you know? You yeah, it does. It does. You lift yourself up as well. Right. Right. Well, Kathy, uh, if someone wants to get in touch with you for more information or yeah. to get a little coaching help, how do they do that? Yeah, they can go to my website, which is kathyearly.com, which is C A T H Y E A R L E Y dot com. So Kathy with a C and early, there's two E's in it. All right. The, so thanks, well, Frank. Well, very enlightening, Kathy. We wish you all the best uh, and uh, hang in there like all of us. Yeah, yeah, you too. Great all to right. talk to you. Have a great rest of your day. That is Leadership Coach. That's Kathy Early. I'm Frank Malicote here in the San Francisco Bay Area. And remember, if you want more information, go to coronavirusnow.com. Have a great day.